All right, I was uh, cleaning up the garage a little bit, uh, rearranging some things, and I ran across this, which I've had for a very long time, but I was never able to really try it out because it was from, a, it's an oscillator, and it goes between two and four gigahertz, and I've never had any equipment that could measure between two and four gigahertz easily. Um, and now I have a 3.2 gigahertz uh, um, spectrum analyzer. So yeah, so I thought I would hook it up. Now, um, I'm not exactly sure what technology this uses. Uh, it's this nice uh, gold, big fat gold thing. It says RF out, and then it's got some things over here. I'll show you a, a picture here. Somebody before me had written some notes on it. So it's got a, a minus 24 volt bias, and a, I believe that says minus 10 to, to minus 50 volts of tune. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, made a new label on the side, so that, in case that one never rubs off, uh, I know this is, this is what's going on, okay? So it's 24 volts and some 50 volt tunes and stuff, so whenever you hear things like that, it, it might output a little bit of power. I know in general these kind of block oscillators are probably in the order of, um, you know, maybe plus 10 dBm or maybe even higher, something like that. Um, and so we need to be very careful when we hook this up to the oscilloscope. We want to use a, an attenuator um, in order to, to, uh, to test this thing. But just as a word of warning uh, for those who have spectrum analyzers now and have never been around them before, I did a video on how to protect your spectrum analyzer using uh, attenuators, how not to kill your spectrum analyzer, or how not to kill your tiny SA, I think was the name of the video. Anyway, but let's just do a thought experiment here. Let's just say we've got one of those uh, oscillator cans, you know, those things that have four pins on them, um, and one's ground, and one's plus five, and one's one's out. Okay? And you'd say, okay, well, that's that's real benign. I'll just hook that up to my uh, spectrum analyzer. Well, not so fast, okay? Let's do a quick calculation. Remember that uh, power equals uh, voltage times current. It's also equal to voltage squared over R, okay? What do we have in this case? Well, we have five volts, okay? And that's squared. And divided by ohms, well, we have 50 ohms, okay? So let's do this calculation. All right, we'll do, uh, we'll do five squared, that's 25, and we'll divide it by 50, and we get 500 milliwatts, okay? Uh, times 10 to the third, minus thir three. So 500 mil, that's a half a, that's a half a, half a watt, okay? That's a half a watt, that's a lot. And that's enough to kill a lot of spectrum analyzers, okay? So, um, how much is that in dB? Okay. Well, we'll take our we'll take our 500 uh, milliwatts. Okay. Uh, so 500, and we will take the log, and we'll multiply that by 10. That's tw that's plus 27 dB milliwatts. Okay. dBm it stands for dB milliwatts. So it's plus 27, that's a lot, okay? And I've got a really, really heavy duty front end on my spectrum analyzer and it's only good up to plus 30, but that's an absolute maximum. That's like, don't go any farther than that. So plus 27 is way, way, way too big um, for most things like a tiny SA. Uh, you will blow up your tiny SA if you just connect a little five volt signal to it, okay? This is just a regular five volt DTL signal. So don't do that. In RF land, things are much, much different. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, uh, a 30 dB attenuator here, all right? So we have to tell the instrument that we have a 30 dB attenuator in line so it can do the math correctly, okay? And then uh, we will hook up our cable. All right, and now we can go back down over here. We can hook up our cable to the oscillator. Let's see, we're gonna need minus 10 to minus 50. That's not easy to do here on my bench without me dragging over another power supply. We'll just see how, how it works up to, uh, I think I can get up to around 30 volts, something like that. So well, let's turn this power supply on and we'll turn that power supply on and we'll use two different supplies, one for the bias and one for the tune. All right, so we'll take this one, we'll use, 
gives it a minus supply. Look up to uh, look up to ground and the negative bias. That's 24. And then this one we have to hook up minus something or other. So we'll hook this power supply backwards. All right, so we'll hook him up like that. Okay, let's turn this one on. And we'll turn this one on. All right. And so what do we have? Oh, we have oscillation. All right, let's kind of tilt this over this, this direction, make it look a little nicer. Um, let's do a peak and we are at plus 28 dBm. So good thing that we have a pad in there. Good thing that we have an attenuator. Uh, plus 28 dBm. So let's, uh, let's crank this down a bit here. Yeah, very, very nice. And it's at 1.9 gigahertz. Okay. And then uh, we are tuning with this supply right here. All right. So let me, let me give it a crank. It's at 8.6. I'm sorry, I'm in the way here. I'm put up to uh, 15 volts now, and we move to two two gigahertz. Uh, I'm just going to be in the way of the camera. I'm sorry. I'm just going to have to wind it up here a bit. Uh, so we're at 17 volts, and now we're at 2.08 gigahertz. Yeah, let me crank it up all the way. That's all I can go. That's as far as I can go. So yeah. So it does tune, and. Uh, Now it's outputting around plus 20. Yeah, it's drifting. It's drifting a little bit. This thing's probably heating up. Yeah, it is, it is heating up. It should be on a heat sink. Um, these things do get toasty. But uh, yeah, there we go. Plus 25 dBm. And it does tune. Uh, let me see if I can hook up another power supply where we can go all the way to 50 volts. All right, I brought over my little HP supply. This is good to 100 volts. And so we can measure what we've got. We've got uh, 1.89 gigahertz, and let's crank up the voltage here. We'll crank it up to around 20 volts. And now we've got uh, 2.26 gigahertz. And we'll crank it up to around 30 volts, which is about there. And we've got 2.99. And I can go off the end, okay? So at 40 volts, it's off somewhere. I don't know where it is. Uh, we could uh, hook it up to a, to a frequency counter, but I'm sure it's fine. Uh, so anyway, now I have a uh, voltage-controlled oscillator from uh, 2 to 4 gigahertz. So that should be useful for something. We might be able to hook up a, a little tracking generator of some kind or do things with it. Uh, how many milliamps do we need? Oh, not a lot of milliamps. So. Okay, well that was just my little oscillator here. And uh, we'll go ahead and turn the power off. And take one final look at it. I'll read you the part number on it. I, don't, I haven't found any data sheets for this thing. It's very, very old. Uh, this was back in the days I was working for WaveTech. Um, this is a uh, Omnispectra... Uh, serial number 101 <laughs> makes you wondering if it wasn't the very, very first one they built in this one. Uh, it might have been an a engineering sample. Uh, it's uh, model A30003. Um, it says 2 to 4.05 gigahertz. Um, and I put a warning label on it. It is uh, up to plus 29 dBm. So, yeah, careful, careful. Nicely gold plated though, nice heavy, uh, thick gold plating on it as it was everything back in the day. But anyway, there you go, my cute little, uh, my cute little oscillator.